Welcome everyone to the build guide for the Compression 4C keyboard. Today we're going to be building up one of these guides. This is my old prototype and hopefully by the end of the day we're going to get something even nicer than this one. This build guide shouldn't take too long, but I'm going to start by covering what components people are going to need to build your own 4C. The first thing you're going to need to build a 4C is going to be the PCBs. So you're going to need a left and a right PCB. These come partially pre-assembled from compression keyboards, or you can also get a uh, manufacturer to make them for you with the design files. Come with the diodes, power switch, and a bunch of other stuff pre-installed. Same with the case. It's 3D printed and you can buy it from compression keyboards. Uh, it comes with all the hardware that you need to build the case. And you can also build the travel case with some magnets that also come pre-included. You'll also get some display covers if you purchase the 3D printed kit and those will help with your displays. If you opt not to get displays, I know they can be a little expensive and some people just don't like the look of them. You can get display covers that don't actually have any display cutouts and they'll still look really good. If you happen to have your own 3D printer at home, ignore all of this. Go to the description, go to the GitHub and download all the files and print them yourself. But if you don't have a 3D printer, compression is going to be selling some really, really nice cases like you see here. What else are we going to need for the build? Well, we're going to need some hot swap sockets. These are the sockets that are going to allow us to take on and off switches at will. So if at one point we decide we want different switches, we can just pull them right off. No soldering required. But we are going to need to solder these to the board. We're also going to need um, some batteries. So you're going to want two of these little batteries with the JST 2.0 connector. I'll have some links to all these items in the description. You also might want some displays. I've got a nice nano, a nice view here. These nice view displays are super power efficient. They're only about 20 bucks. And you can build your compression 4C with one, two, or zero of these displays. At the heart of our build is gonna be the nice nano. We're gonna have one of these for each side of the 4C, and it's gonna be handling communication with the computers through Bluetooth and through USB. It's got a USB-C port for charging, as well as connecting to a computer hardwired. It's going to be handling all the processing. It's going to run ZMK for us. Um, and it's just a really nice little microcontroller that's going to be powering everything. You'll see it used in a lot of other builds, corn builds, other stuff like that. Also, we're going to want these mil max headers for the nice nano. These are going to ensure that we get the exact height right of our controller package. As you can see on this prototype, the space between the screen and the display cover is really small and so using these mil max will guarantee that we get the right height you might find mil max headers labeled easy install i don't really recommend those these are pretty easy if you get the technique right and i'll show you how to solder these on really easily the easy install ones just might mess with the tolerances and the heights of our controller the last thing is the most customizable part of the 4c and that is the switches and the keycaps. So on this prototype board, I use these uh, Sunsets by uh, Low Pro KB in Canada. Really great switches, especially if you're doing a lot of heavy typing. I found that I type super fast on these and I just love the tactile feedback they give. For the keyboard today, we're gonna be using some, uh, make sure we use the box, these Pro Reds. They're lubed up and uh, I spent about three hours individually lubing these. They're gonna sound really good and I think they're gonna give us a great experience here. We'll do some sound tests at the end as well. You might have noticed that we've switched stations here. We're no longer on the nice desk with the uh, LTTstore.com desk pad. We now find ourselves at a different table with a sacrificial ESD uh, desk pad. Uh, you can see a couple of burnt holes from some uh, unfortunate soldering iron placements, but no worries about that. If this is your first time soldering, really do not worry about this project. It's going to be a really easy one to learn soldering with. We're going to start with uh, 58 of these little hot swap connectors, and that's what we're going to start on first. And you can see these gigantic, ginormous pads that we're going to fit these hot swap sockets onto. And uh, they really are going to be quite the good practice if it's your first time soldering. I'm using here a TS-100 soldering iron. This is quite an old model. 
I would recommend nowadays getting a pine sole. They're virtually identical. They're great for beginner soldering irons and they're super powerful for small and big projects. You're also gonna want a wet sponge like I have here. It's gonna be a really good asset for you to have a sponge ready to clean your soldering tip with. Plugging in one of these TS100 soldering irons or a pine sole, you're gonna see that they heat up really quick. I'm gonna be setting my soldering iron to around 400 degrees Celsius for this. After cleaning up my tip, I'm gonna go ahead and tin up the uh, tip of my soldering iron with some of this unleaded solder. If you want an easier time soldering, you can use leaded solder. Obviously it comes with the risks of it being made out of lead. So if you wanna go to the safe route and a little bit harder route, you can use unleaded solder like I am here. But you're gonna to wanna to tin up that uh, solder tip regardless, make sure it's nice and shiny before you can start soldering. All right, we're gonna put in our first hot swap socket here. So we're just gonna take one of these hot swap sockets and put it in. You're gonna wanna make sure that it's actually on the side with those uh, metal pads that you see. That's the back side of the board. It can go in either direction. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold your soldering tip down on top of that pad, and then you're gonna push your solder into your soldering iron. That'll heat it up. It'll make a big blob of solder, um, and you can let it go. You'll see I'll hold down the hot swap socket while I let go with the soldering iron. That way it doesn't come up uh, and it sticks down. But as you can see, I'm just gonna hold down the soldering iron onto that pad and push in the solder. That's gonna melt it right in and then I can let go. And that's it, it's really easy. Once you get going fast with these, you're gonna be able to do these within five, 10 seconds each, and you're just gonna blow through all these. And by the end, if it's your first time soldering, you're gonna be a solder god, and you're gonna be ready for the smaller pins that we're gonna be doing on the microcontroller later. Okay, up next is our nice nano controller. This is the probably most important solder jobs we're gonna be doing and we've got all that practice in from those hot swap sockets, so it's gonna be no problem at all. First thing is dealing with these tiny little Milmax pins. Uh, my technique here is to put in one of those gold ferrules into the top and bottom of each of these sets of pins. Um, that'll let us kind of put just the corners in and we'll be able to kind of finish them up later. I'm gonna take some tweezers and actually push these down in. Yeah, I recommend those tweezers fully. They're really gonna help you at this stage. Get some flathead tweezers and uh, use those to push those ferrules into the corners of your mill max pins. Once we got those ferrules into the top and bottom pins, we can go ahead and slot them in to our PCB. And we're just gonna push them into those holes and we're gonna put our nice nano face down. So you should not be seeing that nice nano logo. It's gotta be face down. There's a reminder on the PCB for you. You should not be seeing a nice nano logo when you solder this thing down. So we're gonna go ahead, put it down onto those four pins that we put in and directly after putting this on, we're actually gonna flip the board over to the back side, and we're gonna be soldering in the mill max headers first. So we're gonna use that nice nano on the back to kind of help us line this up, and we are going to solder the four corners of the headers on the back side of this board. So see all those pins poking through? We only need to do the corners right now. So this is pretty easy. You're just gonna to touch the tip of your soldering iron to the pin, and then you're gonna push in your solder just a little bit of it, and you'll see a little cone of solder build up. You wanna see cones, you don't wanna see domes. If you see a really like spherical shape, you're probably only soldering to the pin and not to the circle on the PCB. You want both of them getting a nice amount of solder connecting up that connection. We're only gonna to wanna to be doing the first four corners here, and afterwards we can flip this thing back over and we should have those kind of pinned in place. Now that we have the header soldered down, we can go ahead and put in all the ferrules. So we only did those first four corner ferrules before. Now we're gonna put in the rest of them. So we're gonna put our nice nano back through those four that we did already. 
and we're going to grab the rest of our gold ferals and we're going to push those in one by one into the header. This is going to be a lot easier than those first four now that it's mounted down the PCB. We can just slot them in with our finger and then take our flat pliers and push them in. They'll give a little click. So you'll see me here going in with the pliers, just pushing them down. They go in real easy compared to those first four. And then once we get all of these in, we're going to start soldering them all down. Just like before, we're going to tap the soldering iron just to the pin and that yellow circle on the nice nanos PCB. And we're going to push in our solder just to put a little glob of solder onto that pin. We're going to want to see cones, not domes once again. So you're not going to want to see a sphere of solder on that pin. That means you've only soldered to the pin. You haven't soldered to the gold contact on the actual PCB. So once you get that cone in, you can move on to the next one. You can see I'm going real fast here. This isn't sped up. This is real time. You just touch, push in a tiny bit of solder, do the next one. If you happen to solder two pins into each other, it's usually a bad thing. You're going to want to break that up. You can just take your soldering iron, clean it off first and swipe it between. Uh, and you can uh, kind of coerce that solder to uh, separate and make sure those pins aren't touching anymore. All right, we've successfully soldered all those pins in, those ferrules in, and now we're gonna do the back side. We're gonna do these headers. So we did the first four earlier. We're just gonna be doing the rest of them. And by this time, we should be a pro at these. Just touching the solder to the pin and pushing in a little bit of solder. If you are opting to put in the nice view screen, you're gonna to wanna to put in these five pins. They're probably gonna be some of the easiest soldering stuff we're gonna, we've done. The best way I found to solder these is to put the pins and the headers together and then put them face down on the table. You can see me struggling to kind of flip this over in time, but you're gonna to wanna to put those headers down on the PCB with the pins on them to kind of prop it up and then put it down onto the table. After we finish up those headers, we're gonna move on to the pins onto the front of the nice view. These five are pretty simple, especially after all the pins we've done so far. You do want to be a little quick about them. You don't want to be causing any heat damage to the LCD screen. I have held my soldering iron onto one of these screens a little bit too long and heated up the screen. I got some temporary artifacts on the screen, but they went away after just a minute or so of cooling down. But do be pretty quick about these. You don't want to cause any damage to your screen. And that concludes all the soldering we have to do for this PCB. Only thing left to solder is some heat set inserts on the case that we'll do in a moment, but we're all done except for plugging in the battery. Please, please, please do make sure when you plug in the battery that you check the plus and minus symbols on the PCB that they line up with the red and black respectively. If you get the polarity wrong on your battery, you are going to end up killing your nice nano microcontroller, so please be careful. Forgive me guys for not recording the build of the other side. I just didn't have it in me to set up the cameras for what is exactly the same thing. They are completely symmetrical. Um, I'm now putting in all of the switches we're going to be using. Once again, these are Pro Reds. I got these from Typer Active. Um, I think they're manufactured directly by Kale. And they're pretty nice, really light red linear switches if you like that kind of thing. I spent three hours one day painfully lubing every single stem of these. They sound awesome. They also feel great. Pushing these in kind of feels like the victory lap for one of these projects. Once you get to this point, you're kind of feeling like, oh, I can't mess anything up. Well, do look out though for the pins on the back of these switches. If you put these in too fast, you might end up bending the pins and they won't actually go inside of the sockets that they're supposed to. So just double check that you aren't bending those pins when they get put in. If you end up bending one of these or they come bent from the factory, don't worry about it. Grab a tweezers and bend them back. They're pretty durable, so you shouldn't have any problem bending those back. We've got all those switches in and they look great. Now it's time to get onto the case assembly. And once again, if you've got your own 3D printer, I recommend printing your own case for your 4C. But if you don't have a printer or a friend with a printer, or you just like the look of our cases, check out Compression's website. We've got a ton of different colors that our cases come in, and they also come with all the hardware you need to build a 4C. So that's the screws, the threaded inserts, and the magnets. 
If you end up building your own case, I'll have linked in the description where you can get all the hardware you need. Right now I'm putting in the threaded inserts into the case. For this, you're gonna to wanna to lower your soldering iron's temp to around 200 Celsius. You don't need it very hot for this. You're just melting these in slightly to the plastic. So you're just gonna put one of the inserts on your soldering iron and push it down into place, making it flush with the rest of the plastic. Next, we're gonna be gluing in each one of these little magnets to our carrying case. So for this, we're gonna be using some super glue and we're just gonna use a tiny, tiny little bit in each one of these holes. Once we've got super glue in each one of these holes, it's time to put the magnets in. We gotta be really careful to make sure that these magnets are all facing the exact same way. So to ensure the polarity stays consistent, we're gonna keep these magnets all stacked up together and use that stack to ensure that the polarity is the same. You'll see me popping these magnets in one at a time and then pushing them in with my flathead tweezers. And anytime I'm unsure of whether the polarity is correct, I'm gonna run that stack of magnets down the side of the case to make sure that they're all pulling the same way. All right, up next is the magnets for the case. These actually sit inside of the case, bumped up next to the PCB, so we don't need to glue these in. It's really nice, don't need to glue them in. If you need to take them out one time, you should be able to get them out pretty easy without that glue. Here you can see me checking the polarity of the magnets that we did on the carrying case. We're gonna match that same polarity by keeping that pole of magnets in the same direction as the uh, attracting direction. So we're gonna pop these in one at a time just like we did before, making sure that the polarity stays the same. Now that we've got all of our magnets in, I've gone ahead and screwed in the keyboard and we're gonna do our first test fit here of the travel case. So if you don't know how it goes in, you put in the top part first and it snaps right down with those magnets. And this one seems to be just perfect. If you are finding you're having a hard time getting it out of the carrying case, you might have scored yourself some really strong magnets. Don't fret, you can just take some out and uh, you will be back in business being able to pull your keyboard out real easy. All right, we've gotten to the fun bit. We're gonna move on to keycaps now, but before we do so, I'm checking each and every one of these keys, making sure they're all registering before I pop on all these keycaps. All I'm doing here is I've actually got a complete version of the firmware flash on both of these sides, and I'm checking the words per minute counter on the right half. That's allowing me to see which ones are actually registering. You definitely could do this a much faster way without abusing the words per minute counter on the displays, but I've just opted to do this. If any of them don't register, probably got a broken pin or a bad solder somewhere. We can go ahead and fix that. Okay, now for the keycaps. These are some Chosfox keycaps. I'd never heard of this company, Chosfox, before, but I stumbled across their chalk switch keycap set that actually has letters on it, which is some pretty hard thing to find. All my prototypes have been letterless, and I've been lucky to be able to memorize all the letters myself. But if you're looking for some lettered keycap set, they seem to be coming out more and more now. These Chosfox ones were pretty cheap and they ship straight from China. So I don't really know how well they're gonna hold up, especially since they're not double shot. I'll let you guys know, I'll post a comment on this video down the line on how these keycaps are holding up. But my guess is they might absorb some hand oils really easily and get gross over time. But for now they look absolutely stellar and it just gets me excited for more and more keycap manufacturers starting to support the chalk ecosystem. Hitting the colon and semicolon key, I got a little nervous as to whether I was getting this layout right, so I brought out my iris, which is the closest split board to me that actually had lettered keycaps on it, just as a reference because I didn't want to mess this up on camera and everyone make me think I am super stupid for not knowing where the keys are. I promise when I'm actually typing, I know where these keys are. I just can't visualize it one by one, nice and slow like this. I wanna thank you all for watching this video and I guess if you've made it this far, you're probably building one of these yourself and I hope you have a great time and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out on our Discord, it's linked below. And uh, I just can't thank you guys enough for all your support and I know there's some people who've been following this project for a long, long time and I hope this video uh, really shows how easy it is and fun it is to build one of these keyboards and 
I hope uh, I get to see a lot of pictures and videos of you guys using these all across the world. I've been using my prototype version at work every single day. I've been using it on the go. I've been using it at my gaming computer, playing Counter-Strike even, and it's just been a great experience. And I hope all of you guys can share in the same experience as me. Anyways, here's a sound test. Thank you all.